The door at the end of the hallway burst open. Seth froze as a small group of soldiers rushed out, ushering a man in regal robes, his head ducked as if to avoid arrows. The soldiers wore deep blue, the color of the king's guard, and the corpses didn't make them stop and gawk. They were prepared for what a shard bearer could do. They opened a side door and shoved their ward through, several leveling spears at Seth as they backed out. Another figure stepped from the king's quarters. He wore glistening blue armor made of smoothly interlocking plates. Unlike common plate armor, however, this armor had no leather or mail visible at the joints. Just smaller plates, fitting together with intricate precision. The armor was beautiful, the blue inlaid with golden bands around the edges of each piece of plate. The helm ornamented with three waves of small horn-like wings. Shard plate, the customary complement to a shard blade. The newcomer carried a sword as well, an enormous shard blade, six feet long with a design along the blade like burning flames, a weapon of silvery metal that gleamed and almost seemed to glow, a weapon designed to slay dark gods, a larger counterpart to the one Zeth carried. Zeth hesitated. He didn't recognize the armor. He had not been warned that he would be set at this task, and hadn't been given proper time to memorize the various suits of plate or blades owned by the Alethi. But a shard bearer would have to be dealt with before he chased the king. He could not leave such a foe behind. Besides, perhaps a shard bearer could defeat him, kill him, and end his miserable life. His lashings wouldn't work directly on someone in shard plate, and the armor would enhance the man, strengthen him. Seth's honor would not allow him to betray his mission or seek death, but if that death occurred, he would welcome it. The shard bearer struck, and Zeth lashed himself to the side of the hallway, leaping with a twist and landing on the wall. He danced backward, blade held at the ready. The Shardbearer fell into an aggressive posture, using one of the sword play stances favored here in the east. He moved far more nimbly than one would expect for a man in such bulky armor. Shard plate was special, as ancient and magical as the blades it complemented. The Shardbearer struck. Zeth skipped to the side and lashed himself to the ceiling as the Shardbearer's blade sliced into the wall. Feeling a thrill at the contest, Seth dashed forward and attacked downward with an overhand blow, trying to hit the Shardbearer's helm. The man ducked, going down on one knee, letting Zeth's blade cleave empty air. Seth leaped backward as the Shardbearer swung upward with his blade, slicing into the ceiling. Seth didn't own a set of plate himself, and didn't care to. His lashings interfered with the gemstones that powered shard plate, and he had to choose one or the other. As the Shardbearer turned, Zeth sprinted forward across the ceiling. As expected, the Shardbearer swung again, and Zeth leaped to the side, rolling. He came up from his roll, then flipped, lashing himself to the floor again. He spun to land on the ground behind the Shardbearer. He slammed his blade into the opponent's open back. Unfortunately, there was one major advantage Plate offered. It could block a shard blade. Seth's weapon hit solidly, causing a web of glowing lines to spread out across the back of the armor, and stormlight began to leak free from them. Shard plate didn't dent or bend like common metal. Seth would have to hit the shard bearer in the same location at least once more to break through. Seth danced out of range as the shard bearer swung in anger, trying to cut at Zeth's knees. The tempest within Zeth gave him many advantages, including the ability to quickly recover from small wounds, but it would not restore limbs killed by a shard blade. He rounded the shard bearer, then picked a moment and dashed forward. The shard bearer swung again, but Zeth briefly lashed himself to the ceiling for lift. He shot into the air, cresting over the swing, then immediately lashed himself back to the floor. He struck as he landed. But the shard bearer recovered quickly and executed a perfect follow-through stroke, coming within a finger of hitting Zeth. The man was dangerously skilled with that blade. Many shard bearers depended too much on the power of their weapon and armor. This man was different. Seth jumped to the wall and struck at the shard bearer with quick, terse attacks, like a snapping eel. The shard bearer fended him off with wide, sweeping counters, 
His blade's length kept Zeth at bay. This is taking too long. If the king slipped away into hiding, Zeth would fail in his mission no matter how many people he killed. Each second this fight lasted was another for the king's escape. It was time to be reckless. Seth launched into the air, lashing himself to the other end of the hallway and falling feet first toward his adversary. The shard bearer didn't hesitate to swing. But Zeth lashed himself down at an angle, dropping immediately. The shard blade swished through the air above him. He landed in a crouch, using his momentum to throw himself forward and swung at the shard bearer's side, where the plate had cracked. He hit with a powerful blow. That piece of the plate shattered, bits of molten metal streaking away. The shard bearer dropped to one knee, raising a hand to his side. Seth raised a foot to the man's side and shoved him backward with a stormlight enhanced kick. The heavy shard bearer crashed into the door of the king's quarters, smashing it and falling partway into the room beyond. Seth left him, ducking instead through the doorway to the right, following the way the king had gone. The hallway here had the same red carpet, and stormlight lamps on the walls gave Seth a chance to recharge the tempest within. Energy blazed within him again, and he sped up. If he could get far enough ahead, he could deal with the king, then turn back to fight off the shard bearer. It wouldn't be easy. A full lashing on a doorway wouldn't stop a shard bearer, and that plate would let the man run supernaturally fast. Seth glanced over his shoulder. The shard bearer wasn't following. The man sat up in his armor, looking dazed. Seth could just barely see him, sitting in the doorway, surrounded by broken bits of wood. Perhaps Zeth had wounded him more than he thought. Or maybe. Zeth froze. He thought of the ducking head of the man who'd been rushed out, face obscured. The shard bearer still wasn't following. He's so skilled. It is said that few men can rival Gavilar Kulen's swordsmanship. Could it be? <sighs> Seth turned and dashed back, trusting his instincts. As soon as the shard bearer saw him, he climbed to his feet with alacrity. Zeth ran faster. What is the safest place for a king? And the hands of some guards fleeing? Or protected in a suit of shard plate left behind, dismissed as a bodyguard? Clever. The formerly sluggish shard bearer fell into another battle stance. Seth attacked with renewed vigor, swinging his blade in a flurry of strikes. The shard bearer, a king, aggressively struck out with broad, sweeping blows. Seth pulled away from one of these, feeling the wind of the weapon passing just inches before him. He timed his next move, then dashed forward, ducking underneath the king's follow-through. The king, expecting another strike at his side, twisted with his arm held protectively to block the hole in his plate. That gave Zeth the room to run past him and into the king's chambers. The king spun around to follow, but Zeth ran through the lavishly furnished chamber, flinging out his hand, touching pieces of furniture he passed. He infused them with stormlight, lashing them to a point behind the king. The furniture tumbled as if the room had been turned on its side, couches, chairs, and tables dropping toward the surprised king. Gavilar made the mistake of chopping at them with his shard blade. The weapon easily sheared through a large couch, but the pieces still crashed into him, making him stumble. A footstool hit him next, throwing him to the ground. Gavilar rolled out of the way of the furniture and charged forward. Plate leaked streams of light from the cracked sections. Seth gathered himself, then leaped into the air, lashing himself backward and to the right as the king arrived. He zipped out of the way of the king's blow, then lashed himself forward with two basic lashings in a row. Stormlight flashed out of him, clothing freezing, as he was pulled toward the king at twice the speed of a normal fall. The king's posture indicated surprise as Zeth lurched in midair, then spun toward him swinging. He slammed his blade into the king's helm, then immediately lashed himself to the ceiling and fell upward, slamming into the stone roof above. He lashed himself in too many directions too quickly and his body had lost track, making it difficult to land gracefully. He stumbled back to his feet. Below, the king stepped back, trying to get into position to swing up at Seth. The man's helm was cracked, leaking stormlight, and he stood protectively, defending the side with a broken plate. The king used a one-handed swing, reaching for the ceiling. Seth immediately lashed himself downward, judging that the king's attack would leave him unable to get his sword back in time. 
Seth underestimated his opponent. The king stepped into Zeth's attack, trusting his helm to absorb the blow. Just as Zeth hit the helm a second time, shattering it. Gavilar punched with his offhand, slamming his gauntleted fist into Zeth's face. Blinding light flashed in Zeth's eyes, a counterpoint to the sudden agony that crashed across his face. Everything blurred, his vision fading, pain, so much pain. Stormlight left him in a rush, and he slammed back into something hard. The balcony doors. More pain broke out across his shoulders as if someone had stabbed him with a hundred daggers and he hit the ground and rolled to a stop, muscles trembling. The blow would have killed an ordinary man. No time for pain. No time for pain. No time for pain. He blinked, shaking his head, the world blurry and dark. Am I blind? No. It was dark outside. He was on the wooden balcony. The force of the blow had thrown him through the doors. The shard bearer. Seth stumbled to his feet, vision swimming. Blood streamed from the side of his face, and stormlight rose from his skin, blinding his left eye. The light. It would heal him if it could. His jaw felt unhinged. Broken? He dropped his shard blade. A lumbering shadow moved in front of him. The shard bearer's armor had leaked enough stormlight that the king was having trouble walking. But he was coming. Seth kneeled, infusing stormlight into the wooden balcony, lashing it downward. The air frosted around him. The tempest roared, traveling down his arms into the wood. He lashed it downward, then did it again. He lashed a fourth time as Gavilar stepped onto the balcony. It lurched under the extra weight. The shard bearer hesitated. Zeth lashed the balcony downward a fifth time. The balcony support shattered, and the entire structure broke free from the building. <laughs> Zeth used his final bit of stormlight to lash himself to the side of the building. He fell to the side, passing the shocked shard bearer, then hit the wall and rolled. The balcony dropped away, the king looking up with shock as he lost his footing. <laughs> The fall was brief. In the moonlight, Zeth watched solemnly, vision still fuzzy, blinded in one eye, as the structure crashed to the stone ground below. <laughs> still standing on the side of the wall, Zeth climbed to his feet. He felt weak. He'd used up his stormlight too quickly, straining his body. <laughs> He stumbled down the side of the building, approaching the wreckage, barely able to remain standing. The king still moved. <coughs> Shard plate would protect a man from such a fall, but a large length of bloodied wood stuck up through Gavilar's side, piercing him where Zeth had broken the plate earlier. Zeth knelt down, inspecting the man's pain-racked face. Strong features square chin, black beard flecked with white, striking pale green eyes. Gavilar Colin. I expected you to come. Seth reached underneath the front of the man's breastplate, tapping the straps there. They unfastened, and he pulled the front of the breastplate free, exposing the gemstones on its interior. Two had been cracked and burned out. Three still glowed. Numb, Zeth breathed in sharply, absorbing the light. <gasps> the storm began to rage again. More light rose from the side of his face, repairing his damaged skin and bones. The pain was still great. Stormlight healing was far from instantaneous. It would be hours before he recovered. You can tell... Thydakar, that he's too late. <clears throat> I don't know who that is. Seth held his hand to the side, resummoning his shard blade. Then who? Restores? Sadius? I never thought... My masters are the Parshendi. The Parshendi? Uh, that makes no sense. Gavilar reached toward his chest, fumbling at a pocket. He pulled out a small, crystalline sphere tied to a chain. You must 
Take this. They must not get it. Tell... Tell my brother. He must find the... most important words a man can say. Gavilar felt still. Seth hesitated, then knelt down and took the sphere. It was odd, unlike any he'd seen before. Though it was completely dark, it seemed to glow somehow, with a light that was black. The Pashindi? Uh, that makes no sense. Nothing makes sense anymore. Seth tucked the strange sphere away. It's all unraveling. I am sorry, King of the Alethi. I doubt that you care. Not anymore, at least. At least you won't have to watch the world ending with the rest of us. Beside the king's body, his shard blade materialized from mist, falling to the stones now that its master was dead. It was worth a fortune. Kingdoms had fallen as men vied to possess a single shard blade. Tell my brother. To Zeth's people, a dying request was sacred. He took the king's hand, dipping it in the man's own blood, then used it to scrawl on the wood. He must find the most important words a man can say. With that, Zeth escaped into the night. He left the king's shard blade. He had no use for it. The blade Zeth already carried was curse enough.